Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video is on aortic dissection. The wall of an artery consists of the tunica intima tunica media and tunica externa, which are the inner layer, middle layer, and outer layer respectively. An acute aortic syndrome is a disruption of these layers of the arterial wall and is split into three subgroups, which are aortic dissection, penetrating aortic ulcer, and intramural hematoma. In this video I will focus on aortic dissection. An aortic dissection is a tear in the intimal layer of the aortic wall, causing blood to flow between, and splitting apart the tunica intima and media. Anterograde dissections propagate towards the iliac arteries. And retrograde dissections propagate towards the aortic valve. They can be acute, which is less than 14 days. Or chronic, more than 14 days. They are more common in men and in patients with connective tissue disorders and have a peak onset between 50 and 70 years. There are two classifications to classify aortic dissection. The first one is DeBakey classification, where it is classified into three types. Type 1 originates in the ascending aorta, and propagates at least to the aortic arch. Type 2 is confined to the ascending aorta, and type 3 originates distal to the subclavian artery in the descending aorta. Type 3 can be further subdivided into 3A, which extends distally to the diaphragm and 3b, which extends beyond the diaphragm into the abdominal aorta. Another classification is the Stanford classification. Type A involves the ascending aorta, and can propagate to the aortic arch and descending aorta, which is similar to DeBakey types 1 and 2. Type B does not involve the ascending aorta, it occurs in any other part of the aortic arch and descending aorta. Similar to DeBakey type 3, the risk factors of aortic dissection are hypertension, aterosclerotic disease, male gender, connective tissue disorders, like Marfan's syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and bicuspid aortic valve. As a general rule, younger cases often have associated connective tissue disorders, whilst older patients are more likely to have underlying hypertension or atherosclerosis. The characteristic presentation of an acute aortic syndrome is a tearing chest pain, classically radiating to the back. The most common clinical signs include tachycardia, hypotension, new aortic regurgitation murmur, or signs of end-organ hypoperfusion, such as reduced urine output, paraplegia, lower limb ischemia, abdominal pain secondary to ischemia, or deteriorating conscious level. A thoracic aortic dissection will often present as chest pain, a presenting problem that has multiple differential diagnoses. Myocardial infarction classically crushing and central chest pain, with signs of cardiac ischemia on ECG and raised serum troponin levels. Pulmonary embolism, where dyspnea will be a prominent feature, with potential hypoxia present. This can be confirmed with a CTPA or VQ scan. Pericarditis, classically pleuritic chest pain, with the ECG showing diffuse ST elevation, as well as potential pericardial rub on auscultation. And musculoskeletal back pain, where the patient will not present with systemic signs of shock, and will be tender to palpation of the chest wall or paraspinal muscles. For investigations, baseline blood tests such as full blood count, urea and electrolytes, liver function test, troponin, coagulation, and with at least four units of packed red blood cells cross-matched. An ECG should also be performed to exclude any cardiac pathology. For imaging, a computed tomography angiogram is recommended to diagnose acute aortic syndrome as first-line imaging. An alternative is transesophageal echo. This picture is a CT scan showing a Stanford type B aortic dissection. For management, start high-flow oxygen, intravenous access to large bore cannula, and fluid resuscitation cautiously. Stanford type of dissections should be managed surgically in the first instance under the care of a cardiothoracic surgery. Any uncomplicated type B dissections can usually be managed medically. Following initial management, all patients need lifelong antihypertensive therapy and surveillance imaging, due to the high risk of developing further dissection or other complications. Imaging would usually be at 1, 3, and 12 months post-discharge, with further scans at 6 to 12 month intervals thereafter, depending on the size of the aorta. For type of dissections, these cases carry a high mortality if left untreated, and these cases should be discussed urgently with a cardiac or vascular surgeon. They will most likely require transfer to a cardiothoracic center. The surgery involves removal of the ascending aorta, with or without the arch, and replacement with synthetic graft. Whereas for type B dissections, uncomplicated type B dissections are best managed medically, with good survival rates. 
First-line treatment is management of hypertension with intravenous beta blockers, such as labetalol or calcium channel blockers as second-line therapy. The aim of this therapy is to rapidly lower the systolic pressure, pulse pressure, and pulse rate, to minimize stress of the dissection and limited further propagation. Surgical intervention in type B dissections is only warranted in the presence of certain complications, such as rupture, renal, visceral or limb ischemia, refectory pain, or uncontrollable hypertension. These are some of the possible complications of aortic dissection. Aortic rupture. Aortic regurgitation. Myocardial ischemia, secondary to coronary artery dissection. Cardiac tamponade. Stroke or paraplegia, secondary to cerebral artery or spinal artery involvement. In summary, the mortality rate remains high, with over 20% of cases dying before reaching hospital. However early diagnosis, intervention, and blood pressure control significantly improves prognosis. That's all for this video. Thank you.